What's up guys, John Monroe, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna do the full review today of my 2019 Acura TLX. We did a partial review when I popped my tire a little while ago. If you haven't seen that, go check it out, it's on my channel. Um, but today we're gonna do a more comprehensive review. We're gonna run through the interior, the exterior of the car. We're gonna do a driving review. And I'm also gonna talk about the infotainment system as well. Um, I did buy this car. <clears throat> I have owned the car for quite a while. I've had it for probably uh, six months or so right now. So I've had a, an opportunity to kind of discover some of the positives and some of the negatives of the car. Um, long story short, it is a great car. I definitely love the car, but there are some drawbacks to the car and there are some really positive pieces to the car that I'll touch on. Um, so we're gonna go through all that today. Stay tuned, but all right, let's get right into it. for you guys we're gonna start her up so you can see how it works when you start the car up the whole seat moves forward for you um, it's an automatic adjustment um, it does idle quite smoothly it is one of the most uh, one of the smoothest running engines that I actually have ever owned in my life when you start the car up, it will automatically pull up Apple CarPlay for you. Um, I do love Apple CarPlay. This infotainment system is one of my favorites. Um, one thing that people complain about a lot is that this infotainment system is not touchscreen. Um, it's touchscreen down here. So when you're doing um, different, uh, like when you're changing your radio stations, like if I have music playing, it'll put the music down here on the CarPlay and then the nav will be up here and everything else uh, will be up top. Um, so I, honestly, I don't really mind that it's not touchscreen. I actually like that it's not touchscreen because you can use this dial right here. And when I turn this dial, it actually works pretty well <clears throat> to pick on the... Uh, to pick on the apps as you go through Apple CarPlay. I actually really like that feature because when I'm driving, I'm personally a button person. Um, so when I'm driving, I don't have to take my hands off the wheel or look down to press a button. I find touch screens in cars to be pretty difficult to use actually because you always have to look at the screen. Like you don't know the screen as well as your iPhone screen. So, you know, when you are um, looking at the screen, it's like one of those things where you do have to take your eyes off the road for quite a bit and it can be pretty distracting. So I actually really, really like that Acura has kept this knob here, uh, but it is really controversial as I mentioned. They they really, uh, they really did upset a lot of people when they didn't put a touchscreen in this car. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Um, I actually, so I showed you the knob. I actually really like that knob. I think the knob is actually easier to use than the touchscreen. Um, when you have a touchscreen in the car, I find it kind of difficult to use. I don't know how you guys feel, but uh, you know, part of it's touchscreen. The bottom piece is touchscreen where I might do my radio, and you'll have like your radio stations and stuff set up, and your heated seats and your AC, um, and all that is touchscreen. But to be honest, the Apple CarPlay, I think it works actually really well with the dial. It's really easy to use, and I always know like where I am, and I know how far it's going to go. It's not a hard to use dial. It's a very easy to use dial. Um, so the infotainment's pretty good. The car play is pretty reliable. The car play is uh, really quick. It fires right up. It works seamlessly. Um, so yeah, I don't really have any complaints about the infotainment system. It's typical Apple CarPlay and it's great. Uh, but all right, so now let's go check out the engine. We're gonna walk around the car and we're gonna check out the engine.
Alright, so this is Acura's 3.5 liter 6 cylinder motor. Um, personally, I think this engine is one of the smoothest running engines that I've actually ever driven in my life. Um, I do love driving this engine. The power is really smooth, the power band is really broad and it's a really linear power band. Um, it holds power all the way right up until redline. Um, it does have a decent amount of torque and I think horsepower is right around 290 something um, Which sounds like it's not that much. I actually had a Super WRX before this and uh, I would think that this car would feel slow But to be honest, it's mated with a nine-speed transmission and that nine-speed transmission rips That thing is like butter when you put it in Sport Plus mode and you rip the pedal all the way down to the floor That transmission shifts so fast that the entire car even with that much horsepower It always has a gear to downshift to so it's always in its power band and Honestly, I've gotten this car to you know 130 140 miles an hour pretty quickly um, I don't do that all the time. It's a bad idea. Don't do that. But it's very easy, for example, to go from like 80 to 100 in a couple seconds. It's pretty quick. Uh, but all right, so let's jump in the car. We're going to do the driving review now. All right, guys. So as I mentioned, uh, this car is one of the uh, smoothest running engines that I've ever driven. The cold car is very smooth to drive. If you think about, um, you know, like a uh, like an ultra luxury car, like an Audi or a BMW, um, it has that feel when you drive. And I actually drove those. And I actually liked how this drove better than the Audi and BMW. Um, it's very comfortable when it's in the right mode. Um, I usually keep it in sport mode. There's uh, there's eco, which you don't want to drive the car in eco. Eco basically turns the car into a total dud um, then you have normal mode which is not bad I like cruising around town in normal mode but I usually keep it in sport mode it keeps the pedal a little more responsive um, and then they also have sport plus mode and sport plus mode is very aggressive um, sport plus mode actually um, sport plus mode actually will downshift when you're coming up to a red light which I find to be a little bit overkill in a car like this um, in an automatic car it feels weird when you hit the brake and the car downshifts um, but if I was racing it or something around a track or if I was you know trying to street race somebody it might be cool um, but you can also use the paddles it has paddle shifters as well and you can do it on your own in sport mode uh, but yeah so the car's in sport mode right now i will put it in sport plus mode and we will do a quick pull in sport plus mode just so you can get a feel for the car and the engine and how it sounds in the, in the cabin another thing with the car is that the cabin is extremely quiet so when you're on the highway if you're cruising on the highway the cabin is one of the quietest cars that i've ever driven in um, if you have somebody on the phone or if uh, you know if you're just trying to relax um, and you're on a long trip it's a great car for long trips it's very comfortable it, the car really has a nice blend between ultra performance you know ultra high performance and extreme comfort it's a very very nice middle ground you can have a lot of fun in this car but you can also drive it you know like a cadillac and cruise um, so what i found with this car it, that does really well is it's very comfortable on long trips it's one of my favorite cars to take on long trips it's very roomy and spacious inside everything is very comfortable it's just the cabin is just a nice place to be um, and then if you want to have some fun on the highway you know you see a Camaro or something like that some or some young kid in a Subaru which used to be me um, you know you can drop it into sport plus mode and this thing will pull on those things all day so it's a it's a very very fun car to have and uh, to kind of play with as you as you drive around um, but all right so now we're gonna get started we do have the push button um, the push button shifter which I actually have grown to like it takes a lot of room out of the way when you're in the cabin um, if you have somebody sitting in your passenger seat or if you have uh, cups or anything like that or if you want to write while you're on the phone um, I do a lot of business in my car uh, it's very nice for that reason because there's no shifter in the way so it frees up a lot of room all right but let's do the driving review now and you can get an idea for how the car sounds inside the cabin All right, so like I mentioned, driving around, um, you can probably hear the engine a little bit, but it is ultra quiet in the cabin. Uh, the cabin is one of the quietest cabins that I've ever experienced. I've experienced Audi, I've experienced BMW. Um, this cabin is right on par with those uh, manufacturers for quite a smaller price tag. Um, I got this car for right around, I think it was like 42, 42 and a half thousand, um, something like that. And Piazza, uh, Piazza Acura hooked me up. They did a great job, great service, uh, gave me a great price. They beat every dealer in the tri-state area. I called all of them. Um, Piazza had the color that I wanted, black on black, and they also gave me the best price without even having to negotiate. So if you're looking for a car in the tri-state area, check out Piazza, uh, Piazza Acura. There's a couple of them, uh, but just Piazza in general. I've always had a good experience with Piazza when I work with those guys. So we are going to drop it into Sport Plus mode right now, and we're going to do a pool for you. I'll let you hear the uh, hear the car. All right, we're in Sport Plus. Here, the engine gets a little louder. All right, we're gonna punch it. Just like that, we're already at sixty. 
Um, but yeah, so that is the, uh, that's Sport Plus mode. You can see how it downshifts as I pull up to the light here. I'm gonna make a right. We're gonna take it through some twisties for you guys. And I'll review it as we go through the twisties. You can probably hear that six cylinder from outside or from inside the cabin. It is one of the nicest sounding motors that I've ever experienced. That's really what le led me to buy the car. I drove this car a few times and I was like, I don't know if I really like it. And then, uh, I, could, I couldn't get enough of that six cylinder. When I went home from the dealership, I could like hear that six cylinder in my dreams. But all right, here we go. We do have... All right, we do have super handling all wheel drive in this car. Um, and I gotta tell you, the all wheel drive is definitely super handling. It's one of the greatest all-wheel drive systems that, uh, that I've ever experienced. It does active torque vectoring, which not many all-wheel drive systems do, um, but this one does active torque vectoring, which is pretty cool. So what that means is it pushes a lot of the power to the outside wheel. All right, so now we're gonna take it on the highway. Can open it up a little bit. You'll notice that it moves pretty good. Um, it's definitely a pretty quick six cylinder. Uh, it's definitely, as you can as you can see, it's very linear and it's very smooth the way it pulls. Um, but yeah, that's in sport plus mode. I'm gonna put it back into sport mode now. One thing that's pretty cool, guys, is that this car actually drives itself. So when you press this button, you'll see it puts it into an automatic cruise control where it does autopilot for you. And then if I set it, it'll actually do a lane keep assist. I can take my hands off the wheel and it'll keep me in the lane that I'm in. And it'll also keep my distance between me and the car in front of me. Which is very cool. My hands are not on the wheel right now. And it'll let you do that for a little while. And then, you know, obviously the government does not let cars totally drive themselves, drive themselves right now um, in this state. But uh, at some point they will. They definitely have the technology to. But you just have to keep your hand on the wheel or else the car will kind of get mad at you. But you'll see it's keeping me at 61 miles an hour right now. And it's also keeping me in the lane and my hands are not on the wheel, which is one of the coolest features of the car. I do really like that. It does it in low speed traffic as well. It does low, low speed, uh, I don't know what they call it, but it's just a low speed cruise control where when you're in traffic, you don't have to drive the car. You see that's gonna tell me to put my hands on the wheel. So I'll do that, my hands are on the wheel now. But yeah, very cool feature. All right, so all in all, you saw kind of through the twisties that, uh, you know, this car handles pretty well. I got to tell you, it's one of the, uh, it's definitely one of the best handling cars that, um, uh, that I've ever driven. Um, just pulled up to a stoplight here, and one thing that I do want you to know is that when you do, it does have this auto stop start system. Uh, when you pull up to stoplights, it does turn on and off, um, which saves gas, but honestly, the car in terms of gas mileage is not that good. I think I average like 18 to 19 miles of a gallon. It's much better on the highway. The nine speed definitely helps on the highway, but when you're driving uh, in the city, it doesn't really do all that much for you. Um, the auto stop start system is, uh, is pretty good. It's not something that's intrusive. Um, I turn it off sometimes. Uh, one annoying thing that does happen is when you pull up and you're, you're trying to park, um, it'll it'll turn the car off as you're pulling into a parking spot to try to park. Then when you hit the park button on the shifter, the car turns back on and puts the car in park. Um, now I know you know some people argue that it's going to put extra wear on the car when the car is turning on and off, and that it's not worth the amount of money you're saving gas. Um, a good YouTuber on YouTube did a good video on that. Engineering Explained. He's a uh, he's a pretty smart guy, and he did a uh, comparison just in terms of how much gas you use when you're idling at a, at a light versus when the car turns on and off. And he also made the point that uh, you know Acura engineers and Honda engineers have already thought about that, and they've put different um, different starters in these cars that are more resilient and have longer start stop lives. Um, so I don't know how true that is, but he had a lot of good research behind it, and it sounded pretty good. And I'm sure you know honestly. 
Acura and Honda engineers are, uh, are pretty smart people. I'm sure they thought of you know the additional wear that it was going to put on the starter and how much that was going to cost for people for repairs. Although you do have to keep in mind that you know they are mo mostly concerned with sales. So what sells? Eco-friendly sales. Um, so you know how true is it that the, the starter is not going to be super expensive to replace when it does go? And is it going to go faster? I, I don't know. They're not really obligated to um, you know make that last longer just because they put it in the car. But I do have a feeling that it's not a traditional starter. That they have done some, uh, you know, different engineering in the starter to make it last a little bit longer. I'm sure, um, but yeah, the car overall, I do, uh, I do totally love this car. Um, very smooth, very good looking car. I get a lot of compliments on it when I drive around. People tell me and it's, it's it's one of those cars that not everybody has. Um, one of my favorite parts about the car are the headlights. The headlights are super cool. They look awesome in person. Um, I was looking at a couple different colors of this car. It does also come in a blue and red color. Uh, that blue and red color is pretty cool. It is a lot, though, and all of my friends and family that I asked about that color, they all said it was way too much because um, it comes with, like, red leather interior. But, uh, but in person, I got to tell you, it looks kind of cool. If you want a super bold car, that blue and that red together, um, they are a lot, but it is kind of cool. Um, but I got black on black because black's classic, and uh, I do like black. I think it'll resell well. Um, that's another thing about this car, guys. Uh, Acuras in, in, in themselves, uh, Acuras in general, uh, do have pretty good resale value, and they are pretty reliable. Uh, so that's one of those things that I really cared about was uh, resale value and reliability. When you're buying a car, um, it's one of those things to, to really focus on because honestly, the car actually only costs you the amount of money that it depreciates. So even though the price tag of one car may be higher than the other, chances are you're not gonna keep that car forever. Um, so really the only cost to you that you're actually experiencing when you buy and sell the car is um, you know, the, the amount that it depreciates. So I like to calculate that, that depreciation expense. So really the only thing that matters to you is the depreciation expense. For example, if you buy a car for $30,000 um, and you know in, in six years it drops down the value, the resale value goes to $20,000, um, really the only thing that matters to you is the difference between the 30 and the 20, which is $10,000 divided by six years. That's your actual cost that you spend on the car. You're always gonna have insurance and repairs and all that crap, but the actual uh, price that you spend on the car is the depreciation value. So there's certain cars that depreciate far less than other cars. For example, the Toyota Tacoma consistently every year is one of the, um, the highest resale value cars on Kelly Blue Book. I think after five years, it holds like 73% of its value or something like that. Um, so really when you buy that car, <clears throat> even though it's Thirty six, forty thousand dollars, whatever it might be, you're really only spending the depreciation expense on the car. Um, so keep that in mind when you buy your cars, guys. Unless you're going to keep them forever, then it, then it doesn't matter. But most of us don't keep our cars forever. So that's the car. Uh, my recommendation to you, if you're thinking about buying this car, is that uh, you know this car is an awesome car if you want something that's a nice blend between performance, uh, luxury, and reliability, and uh, kind of a good value. It's a really good car for all those things. That's kind of why I bought it. I'm a very, uh, I'm, I tend to be a very like rational decision maker in terms of how I decide things, and sometimes I overanalyze things. Um, I found this car to be a good balance of all those things. Um, you know, I, I wanted a car that was all-wheel drive. I wanted something that was luxurious. Um, I wanted something that was a little bit fancy, but also sporty enough, and also not a crazy price tag. Um, for for perspective. This car is fully loaded. I have the sunroof. I have the heated seats. I have the cooled seats. Um, that is one cool feature of this car. The seats in this car are air conditioned. That is one of my favorite features of the entire car is having air conditioned seats. If you haven't had air conditioned seats, uh, you definitely want air conditioned seats. Air conditioned seats are awesome in the summertime. I don't know about you. If you're you know a regular guy, a lot of us sweat a lot. Um, you know, if it's hot out. I'm probably sweating. Uh, so having air conditioned seats when I'm in my car is freaking awesome. If I have the windows down and I have the air conditioned seats on, it's amazing. Um, it cools you down right away. I use them all the time. Um, so yeah, it is one of those, uh, one of those cool features. Uh, but yeah, so this car in general, uh, it's a good balance between a lot of things and, uh, it does have a lot of good features about it. In terms of the uh, the all-wheel drive system, I've driven it in the snow, um, I've driven it in the rain, uh, and I got I to gotta tell you, the all-wheel drive system is one of the quickest all-wheel drive systems in, in terms of how quickly it engages that I've ever driven. Uh, it definitely feels like it's front wheel biased. I don't really feel it uh, you know, pushing from the back end ever, um, but the car does handle great through turns with that said. So Acura's super handling all-wheel drive system actually has something called active torque vectoring, um, which is actually pretty cool. So what it does is it actually sends power to the outside wheel through a turn so when you're going through a turn it'll actually it'll put more power to the you know the, the outer right and the outer left wheel to really give you that like that feeling of something pulling you through a turn and really driving you through the turn um, 
and it's really a very cool feature. You do feel it. Uh, you, you do feel it actually happen when you're driving the car if you take a turn really hard. And it's one of the only all-wheel drive systems out there right now at, you know, certainly at this price tag that has true active torque vectoring. Um, there's a lot of cars that claim they do torque vectoring, but they do it by using inside wheel braking. So there's two ways to do torque vectoring. You can either brake the inside wheel of a turn, which in turn pulls the outside of the car around the turn really fast, or you can actively do torque vectoring, which is where you drive power through the drive shaft out to the wheels on the outside. So you're actually pushing power through the outside wheels instead of breaking the inside wheel and making the car kind of crank around a turn. Um, instead of doing that, you're pushing it through the turn. Um, and it actually, it makes a big difference. It's very cool. Um, in the weather, it's uh, it's not that great with the stock tires, but I got to tell you, I feel like if I put <clears throat> some Continental uh, all-season tires on this car, I do expect it to be really good in the snow. I don't think, I don't see why it would be any worse than my Subaru. Um, <clears throat> the all-wheel drive system is great, and honestly, when you drive in the snow, it's all about your tires. Uh, it really doesn't matter how great your all-wheel drive system is. If you don't have good tires, you're not going to go anywhere, and you're not going to be able to stop. Um, so this car, I think the all-wheel drive system is more than capable to handle good snowy conditions. Um, and you know, if you turn traction control off, it's already pretty good, and it's very, very quick. When the, when I feel wheel slip happen in this car, it does catch it really quick. Um, it's a very, very quick all-wheel drive. System. System. But I will say that the stock tires on the car are something called eco-friendly tires, like Eco Pro or something. There's some Michelin tire, probably a fine, you know, quality tire. But uh, you know, in general, the tires are not very grippy. So when it rains and I, you know, step on the throttle around a turn, this car will cut loose around a turn in the rain with these tires on it. Um, and in the snow, when it's stopping and, and going, is not very good with these eco tires because the tires actually have some have a low profile tread um, to to maximize gas mileage. So these are all things to keep in mind with this car. Um, overall, though, guys, my recommendation, if you're looking at buying this car, I would buy the car again. Um, you know, I just bought it six months ago, so I'm glad I still feel that way. But it is a very nice car. Um, definitely like it a lot. I get a lot of compliments on it. And I think you guys would probably like the car if you're looking for that nice blend between you know fast and reliable. All right, guys, so that's the review of my 2019 Acura TLX. If you like this video, please like and subscribe down below. This is my channel. Again, I'm John Monroe. I will be doing some more car reviews. I'm also doing a uh, summer cutting series. Uh, I do a little bit of fitness stuff, so I'm doing a summer cutting series in terms of dieting and, and what's uh, you know what are some good ways to diet in the summertime. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, and also, uh, I do a little bit of photography as well. Um, so if you're interested in cool pictures, go follow me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram handle at the end of this video but uh yeah with that we're gonna wrap things up and thanks for watching guys